I'm Missionary Daniel Yang, a silver missionary to Rwanda by God's grace. In March 1979, God sent Mission Deborah and me to America as missionaries only 44 years ago. In 2015, God led me to retire after working 40 years. Dr. Joseph Chung, my role model, used to encourage me to serve Ugandan mission, but I thought I could not serve silver missions since I was not a doctor or a nurse. All my career life, I had been a banker and even in UBF, I had been a financial officer. So how could I be a silver missionary? I wondered, not knowing how I could serve God's ministry in my retirement. One day in early 2017, Pastor Mark Pusakovich asked me to serve silver missions as a chair of the committee. In order to learn and experience silver missions, in January, I attended a Bible conference in Belize. I was deeply moved by missionary Moses and Sarah Chang. In April of the same year, 2017, God sent Mission Deborah and me to East African Bible Conference in Kenya. While I was studying the passage of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, I realized that just like the prodigal son, I was wasting all the wealth God had given me. God-given wealth was, as you can see, PowerPoint here, Bible studies over many years in UBF, English, financial resources, good health, and sufficient time after retirement. With a repentant heart, I decided to visit the campus of IIT in Chicago more often and give my heart and God-given wealth for students in the US after my returning home. We had an itinerary to visit Uganda for two days and then to visit Rwanda for two days after the Kenyan conference. It was because our Ugandan co-workers had served Rwandan students by sending co-workers one weekend every month for many years. We just wanted to go and see students there. During the conference, we were impressed by seven Rwandan students who attended the conference by a 24 hours bus ride. When you met another seven law school students in Kigali, the capital city, they seemed to be eager to study the words of God. All of them were seniors. All the seven students who attended the Kenya conference also seniors. That means that in a month, all of those students would graduate and go home to remote villages then the work of God in Rwanda would end in a month. Should begin all over again. The campus students were like a sheep without a shepherd. In this desperate situation, God worked mightily in my heart. I thought even I, an unworthy, unprepared person must stay here and take care of them. Even for a small decision, such as buying a car, I usually need days, weeks of research. But God moved my heart to make an instant decision to cancel my return trip to US. In this way, God himself led me to stay and serve Rwandan students, extending my two days visit to two months short-term missions. Now I see that it was like God's calling of Isaiah in chapter six, verse eight. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And he, I said, here am I, send me. 
Later I learned that Rwandan students had prayed earnestly for God to send one long-term missionary family. Also I learned later that missionary Deborah had prayed to God wholeheartedly for his mighty work in my heart. God answered their prayers. Amen. The next day, Mission Deborah left for the US to serve my aged mother. Like Jacob in Bethel, I was all by myself. In terms of money matters, I tried hard to learn Jesus' manger spirit and the John the Baptist lifestyle, such as sleeping on cold tile without a mattress or eating just bread and peanut butter. It was because Rwandan students live a whole month with only $30. Commuting between the campus town Huye and Kigali city, it takes four hours one way by bus and motorcycle. God enabled me to serve many thirsty students with one-to-one -one Bible studies. I could serve Bible studies at various places, such as on the benches, on the trees, in a hut, or classrooms where there, there were many mosquitoes. Thank God that the word of God has a power in the hearts of students. Sometimes God enabled me to serve seven one-to-one -one Bible studies a day, or 27 Bible studies a week. Honestly, the life in Rwanda was difficult for anyone who comes from America. One day it was like seven hard days in the US. Yet God filled my heart with a spirit and joy. For a long time, I had prayed for 12 one-tone Bible studies and to raise 12 disciples of Jesus. Thank God for remembering, blessing my prayers. Meantime in Chicago, Bishop Deborah prayed for me and the Bible students with many days of fasting. Thank God that he raised one faithful man, Shepherd Hodar, and Shepherd Amy was just began Bible study with me during those two months. And you can see some of those uh, work of God in the pictures. One month later in May, most of the students went home for a long summer vacation. But we found out that medical students were still on the campus. So one morning, God inspired me with the Jesus' great commissions, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, 19 and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Holding on Jesus' command and promise, the three of us went out to the medical school for outreach. That day, God gave us 25 precious names, four numbers, and 20 more names next day. We were overjoyed. In June, I came back to Chicago three months later. In September 2017, God sent missionary Deborah and myself as a silver missionaries to Rwanda. Since the pandemic, God has blessed us to serve 25 to 30 leaders and by faithful students with the one-to-one -one Bible studies every week. Among them, two graduate shepherds, Amy and Theophile, and six other student shepherds like uh, Roger West serve 40 to 50 students with the one-to-one -one Bible studies every week. Thank and praise God for raising disciples of Jesus and disciple makers for Jesus among native Rwandans. May God call and send many silver missionaries and raise up disciples of Jesus through us. Uh -huh.
Pizza Pizza shown in PowerPoint. What did you say? Can you repeat that? Topics, maybe oh, okay. we can share later, okay? Okay. And wow, based thank on you. my humble experience, I want to recap three steps for syllable missions. And the mission table having little, okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> pair topics you shared. And one thing I learned very interesting fact. Faithful Christian made the couples like us healthy life expectancy is 85 years for surveys by Medicare Health Outcomes and Ohio State University, Dr. Hennis. 85 years. That means we have 20 more active healthy years after retirement at age 65. So we need a good spiritual retirement plan such as silver senior missions. And the first step, realized wealth God has given to us. I think we will all of us have that. It's been number three, financial resources. You see there, 500 to $1,000 a month is enough for self-supporting in the many developing countries. And next step is uh, we pray, play, and experience, like uh, remembering Jesus' great commissions. Or Isaiah 6 a say, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here am I, send me. Then the question is, when, where, how? I would say here and now, we can visit nearby or overseas campuses after attending any Bible conferences. And third step could be just follow, not pushing myself, just follow as God moves our hearts and leads us. Just like a Paul who went to Macedonia at the seeing of vision. God himself will call and raise his disciples. God will fill our heart with overflowing joy and meaning of life. Indeed, Silver Senior Mission is one of the best spiritual retirement plans. Thank God. God bless you. Amen.